So now we're going to talk about MIPS memory organization and in particular the difference between the register file and the main memory. So MIPS is a load store register file machine. So we've already seen a little bit about the register file here and that's that instructions compute only on data in the register file. So here's our register file. We've seen it before. We have 32 entries. Register 0 is always 0 and they're 32 bits wide. And we've mentioned that this is small and fast. The register file is hooked up to the compute logic. This is the part that actually does the add, subtraction, and multiply. We've seen some examples of this so far. We've seen add instructions and other instructions that need the data to be in the register file to do the computation. But of course this is small. We only have 32 registers in the register file, so this isn't big enough for any significant program. So we need something more, and what that is is our memory. And obviously the memory is large, but it's also very slow. So most of the data is stored in the memory and we need to get it back and forth to the register file. To do this we transfer the data. So we use loads to load the data from the memory into the register file. So if we have data over here in the memory, we want to move it over to the register file, we load it into the register file. And to go the other way we have stores. So if we have data in the register file, we want to put it in the memory, we store it back to the memory. So now you know why this is called a load store register file machine. Everything you do for computing has to come from the register file, and to get the data back and forth between the memory and the register file, you load and store it. So now let's talk about the way memory is organized. So in MIPS, memory is a large one-dimensional array, so think of it as a long array, and each location is one byte or eight bits. So this eight bits is different from the register file. Remember, the register files reach 32 bits. So here's our memory got a whole bunch of 8-bit locations in it. The memory is indexed by memory addresses. So we have addresses go 0, 1, 2, all the way up to the full size of the memory. And each one of these addresses points to another location in the memory. For a 32-bit computer, there are 2 to the 32 memory locations, or 2 to the 32 bytes, or 4 gigabytes of memory locations. For a 64-bit computer, there are 2 to the 64 possible locations, or 16 exabytes, although in practice 64-bit machines tend to be limited just because it's not practical. So question, why is the largest address for a 32-bit machine 2 to the 32 minus 1? Here we go. Well the answer to this is we start counting at 0. So the first memory location is number 0 and the second location is number 1. So we do have 2 to the 32 memory locations, but because we started at 0, the last one is 2 to the 32 minus 1. If we wanted to express 2 to the 32, we need another bit, so we need 33 bits here. So now let's compare the memory and the register file. So the first thing you notice, the register file has this hard-coded 0 in it. And if we look at them closer, we can see the memory each element is 8 bits wide and the register file 32 bits wide. The memory has a whole bunch more locations. In fact, it's got 4 billion memory locations for a 32-bit machine, whereas the register file only has 32 registers. So these are very different memories. you also notice that the memory is slow. The memory is huge and slow. The register file is small and fast. This is going to be a common trade-off you'll see a bunch of times in this class. So here's a question. How many memory locations do we need to fill a register in the register file? Well, the answer here is 4. And it's easy to see this because the register files need 32 bits for each register, but the memory only has 8 bits in each location. So we need to take 4 locations if we're going to load data into the register file. So this is inconvenient. We don't want to have this sort of different sizes of data in different places. And in MIPS, we mostly deal with data in these four byte chunks, 32 bits or a word. So in MIPS, we're mostly going to talk about words. So each register is one word, and four memory locations is one word because that gives you 32 bits. So now keeping this in mind, let's look at two different ways to view memory. There's the byte addressable view of memory and the word aligned view of memory. So the byte addressable view is the one we just presented. We're looking at each of these eight bits of data, or one byte chunks, and we have addresses that are byte addresses, just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. However, as we just said, most data in MIPS is handled in words, not bytes. So we need to put four of these together if we want to handle it. And we've seen examples of where we use these words, or 32 bits of data. Registers and addresses are both one word. 
So now let's take a look at memory in a slightly different view. We're going to look at the same data as we had here, but now we're going to look at it as word-aligned data. So here's address 0, and we want to look at it as one word, which is 4 bytes or 32 bits of data. So to look at the word-aligned view, we're going to take address 0, 1, 2, and 3, and put them together into one word. So this is taking the first four entries of the memory and saying that's one word aligned. Now the next one is obviously going to be four, and it's going to have addresses four, five, six, and seven. So these are the addresses of the bytes, four, five, six, and seven, but the word aligned address for that whole word is four. And obviously this just continues in multiples of four. So the benefit of doing this is now if we load a word-aligned address, we can load a full word of data directly into the register, which is great because our registers take a full word. So a question, what are the last two bits of a word address? Well, the last two bits are always 0, 0. And this is because words are four bytes along, so that means every word address is an even multiple of four. And if you look at that in binary, 0 ends in 0, 0, 4 ends in 0, 0, 8 ends in 0, 0, and 12 ends in 0, 0. So this will be all addresses that end in 0, 0. Now let's take a look at the issue of accessing aligned and unaligned data. So aligned addresses are these nice ones that fall on 4-byte word boundaries. These are these four multiple of 4 addresses, 0, 4, 8, and 12. If we want to access one of them, here we're going to access address 0. We read this whole word of data, and it's nicely aligned with the memory layout. Unaligned addresses don't fall into that nice pattern. So for example, here we want to access byte 9. So here was 8 and 9, but in order to load in the word that starts at 9, we need to load 9, 10, 11, and 12. And these addresses fall on two different words. And this is a lot harder to accomplish. So some machines support this. NIPS is not one of them. So for the code you're writing, it's not going to support unaligned address accesses. And the way you can do this is the hardware can convert it into multiple aligned accesses. So if we want to load this unaligned data, we can first load this word, and then second load this word, and then combine them so that we get the right bytes put together. Or you can do it in software. But doing it in software is slow, and we'll see that in class. There's typically a performance penalty for doing this either way. Intel finally got around to providing high performance accesses like this in 2010. So it took a very long time before unaligned accesses became pretty fast on modern processors. So when we talk about this aligned and unaligned, remember the reason we're doing this is because we have byte addressable memory. That is, our addresses point to individual bytes, but we have a 32-bit machine that wants 32 bits or a word at a time. So a question, is it reasonable that the memory is much slower than the register file? The answer is yes. So we told you the memory is much bigger. It's 35 million times larger than the register file. And we haven't told you how you make a memory, but it's reasonable to think that if I have to make something that's 35 million times bigger, it's going to be a lot slower than I could make something that's really small. And in reality, it turns out that registers are about 200 times faster than the main memory, which is actually pretty good considering the main memory is 35 million times larger. 